Okay, it looks like we're set up for recording and so uh, we will get started. Welcome to Rx for Healthcare and talking about getting started on a uh, coaching program. I would like to just uh, also introduce, and I'm going to say a little bit more about ourselves, um, Sandra Mall, who is here to assist us as uh, we observe the Q&A because we welcome you. <laughs> And even possibly some of you may want to um, reveal yourselves when you're asking a question. We'd love to see uh, faces. So Sandra, do you want to just uh, show your face and <laughs> say hello? Great. Hi, all. Okay. And uh, great. Okay. And so I am uh, Alison Hendren, and I am delivering this webinar today, this web meeting, and I'm the CEO and founder of Coaching Out of the Box. I'm a passionate coaching educator with a lot of experience in bringing coaching uh, to organizations, and specifically, or in additionally, um, we've developed a particular expertise in the healthcare sector and of course that's what we're going to be talking about today we've had uh you can see on the slide that there's a lot of information about me i'm a longtime educator since i a coaching educator and uh created coaching out of the box because i wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to learn coaching skills and the other thing that I'll just briefly mention is that we now have over 18,000 people who've experienced our programs and uh, in multiple sectors. So not just healthcare, but government and business and in, in over 38 countries because we deliver our programs live as well as virtual. I wanted to leverage technology when uh, I began coaching out of the box. And so that's, that's why we have people in so many different countries. And welcome as you uh, as you're entering uh, the class, the classroom. Um, so, what I want to talk about today is uh, what are what are our objectives for this web meeting, and we're going to speak about uh, approaches and how do you decide on approach an approach to the organization in the healthcare setting what what is going to work uh, work best for you or you who who are working within a healthcare environment or you who are thinking of working with a healthcare environment and wanting to bring coaching in we are going to share three different case studies organizing healthcare organizations that we've worked with who have brought coaching into their organization. We're also going to share the results that they have achieved. And as this webinar unfolds, we'll, uh, we'll allow for some Q&A and Sandra will be monitoring uh, the chat area uh, if any questions come up. What I'd, what I'd also like to say is that um, I'm going to be um, sharing a lot of information with you today. And what I want you to know is this uh, web, web meeting will be recorded as well as uh, uh, when we send, look for a follow-up uh, email from us because we have a, a very detailed report that you can download. We'll give you, uh, we'll show you how to do that, that you can also get after this webinar. But just stay tuned for that because you'll, you will get an email from us after the webinar about that. Okay, and so, um, so what is, what, is, what is the best approach that you can use? when you're bringing a coaching program into the healthcare environment. And um, I wanna just mention that um, we came up with or have come up with some questions that your organization or you would want to consider when you're thinking of bringing a coaching program into healthcare. And by the way, just so you know, we certainly are seeing it growing because of the success that some some healthcare settings are having in bringing coaching, and I'll be sharing that with you in a, in a little while in terms of results achieved. But also, um, 
they're looking at, they're wanting to strengthen, of course, the organization and the communication that's going on in the organization. And of course, with all the change that is going on, not just in healthcare, but in all organizations, they need new tools. Our leaders and managers and people that work in organization need some new tools. And the other thing that we're seeing is that people, uh, and this was a comment from somebody in the healthcare environment who said to me, and she had worked in there a long time, and she said, you know, what she was seeing was that people are hungering for different kinds of conversations, and that's where coaching can really support that. So when you're considering this, it would be important to look at, well, how many people are going to be trained? Some healthcare environments talk about, well, we want, to, we want to train all our leaders, for example. Some want to focus on HR, for example, the HR section. Some want to, want to, are looking at, no, we just want to, we really just want to start with the senior leadership team. And so think about and look at who are they talking about? Who are they talking about, about in terms of equipping uh, people in the healthcare environment with coaching skills? And what kind of time are they looking at? Do they want to do it quickly? Do they, do they want to spread it out over time? And what we also find is that it depends, of course, on the size of the the healthcare organization because we have worked with organizations in the healthcare environment that have anywhere up to um, you know 500 up to over 150,000 employees so how many are we talking here what is the time frame who have we got that's qualified to do this uh, do we have HR people available to conduct the training who, who's going to do this and what is it that we are wanting to accomplish? And I can't emphasize this enough. enough. In other words, what is going to tell the organization that this was worth it, that this was successful? What is it we're wanting to accomplish? What, is, what are the outcomes that we want? Very, very important. And in the successful organizations that we have worked with, they have, they have identified what that is. Or if they haven't initially, that they very soon determine what are those outcomes that we're wanting to achieve. Because of course, they're investing uh, money in doing this. So it's very, very important. And what kinds of issues are going on in the organization? That will be important in terms of what you're going, how you're going to uh, bring this program in, bring a coaching program in. And is it ready? And what is, what is it that's going to tell you that this organization is ready to do this? And what is the budget? What is the budget that's allotted? What, what kind of funds are available? in order to do this, They're very, very important. And I'm curious, um, I'm curious in, um, in the attendees that are here today, what have I missed? Anybody got any, is there anything else that maybe I should have mentioned here? What do you think might, might be another thing to consider? Anybody got any ideas on that? Just share that, ah, ah, are we discussing coaching or training? What we're, we're, Marion, thank you for that. What we're discussing is when a healthcare organization is considering bringing coaching training, so developing coaching capacity, developing the skills of coaching for their leaders, for their managers, in other words, bringing in coaching skills, which I'm glad you mentioned that, so that they can use those and they can, they can capitalize on those skills, versus what I think you might be meaning is um, bringing in executive coaching or coaching coaches to coach uh, various leaders and managers in the organization. And um, yes, we have, and I'm, I'm going to be sharing those, those results. And um, able to articulate, oh, very, very good question, Elaine. Yes, how do you do that? Well, hopefully, some of what you're gonna to learn today is going to help them. But 
the one thing I would mention here, and I'm just going to, um, the one thing that I would mention here is the more that any of you, when you're interacting, use your own coaching skills and use a coach approach to support the organization in figuring out, well, what is it they're wanting to do? What is it that they're wanting to achieve? So I'm, I'm just gonna move to the next slide because this one, this one talks about the different um, approaches and, and what's going to help you know. So for example, what I mean by that is external, meaning the organization is going to bring in an external organization, external trainers to come into the organization and develop the coaching skills for those people. That's one way. Another way is blended. It may be that the organization is saying, okay, we maybe we want to do a mix because we want to eventually have our own resources available to us. And then the other one, it may be that we want to develop some internal capacity of some key people who can deliver coaching skills training throughout the organization. And so these are some of the key things that you might want to consider when you're supporting an organization or you as a, a person in your organization are looking at what's going to be our best approach. And so, as you can see in this um, table, and it will be included in the report that you can download um, shortly uh, to, to uh, with all the, this will be included in that. So for example, um, the organization is saying it's important that our trainers are already experienced, well-developed, and can also bring in some new insights and perspectives, for example. As I said before, the organization may be saying, hmm, we want a mix. We want a mix of both because we can see that both perspectives can be very powerful and potent in the organization. And that Another one is saying, no, we want them all because they understand healthcare, they, want, they, they know the culture of the organization, and we, um, and we have people who are qualified. The other thing that may be impacting the decision, and it, and it can change over time, is what's going on in the organization. Maybe there's some real challenges with people in the organization even uh, trusting uh, the people that are working within the organization. There may be trust issues. There may be issues that, that at this, at initially at least, certainly, they want external people coming in. Um, and again, there could be some bias. So th th there's got to be trust with whoever is doing this, training people, that they have that. And it may be that there's issues going on that just it isn't there at the moment. Um, maybe they want to do it quite quickly and they just don't have the, the capacity. So that's why they bring in external people to do that. And, um, and like I said, they want to go, go quickly. And as you can see, there's, there's a continuum when we move through to the blended, when we move through to the uh, all internal. So, and as you can see, what's the budget? As I mentioned before in those seven key question, questions, what is the budget that they have to be able to do that? So these are some important pieces to this. And I think that also it's, again, you want to know well, what is it that they are wanting to accomplish and determining that will be it may be your first, uh, or if a, an organization is working with us, for example, that's one of our first things is, what is it you're wanting to accomplish? And what is it that's motivating you or driving this uh, to happen? And so that will be very, very, very important. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So, I want to move into the case studies that we've had with the work that we've done in organizations. And what we're going to talk about first is internal. It's all been done internally. The next one we're going to talk about is 
what I'm, I'm calling blended. And the third one is external. And so I'm just noticing I want to pause my, uh, for some reason, my, um, my, ah, there it is, sorry. I'm just going to pause my share and I'm just going to, um, I'm hoping that you can just see me alone. And Sandra can, because for some reason my, um, my video is not showing and I, I want to know, Sandra, that people can see us. I can still just see the, um, the slides on the screen and not just your video. Okay, so I don't know why that is. I don't know why that's happened. Uh, but uh, I'm going to just go back to um, unpausing it. And I'm not sure that somehow, can you see that, Sandra, to unpause it? For some reason, it's just not wanting to do it. Um, isn't that interesting? Oh, well, we will just, I'm going to just resume the share and see if that makes it work any better. Maybe it doesn't and maybe it does. We don't know. There we are. I think it's showing up now. Okay. So as I mentioned, internal, blended, and external. So here's, here's the first one, internal. In this organization, they began this in 2013. And what they did is they have, so far, they've had 300 people uh, through, in, in, the, in our case, in this case, our own coaching program. So what happened was they had already qualified coaches within the organization. And what happened was they simply took our train the trainer program because they were already qualified coaches and we have a program that has been used extensively and they brought that into the organization and then over time they have delivered it and what they did is they have uh, also what was another quality of that organization is they had already at that point they had uh, had executive coaching happening for their senior leaders. So some of the people in the organization were already experiencing being coached by executive coaches and they were, they were gaining, uh, they were recognizing the skills that those executive coaches were using and they were thinking, you know, this would be good for us to learn some of these skills. Not that everyone becomes a certified coach, for example, but that those skills of coaching would be very useful to have. So they already had that. They also had the desire to create a coaching culture. Again, that's because they'd already been experiencing executive coaching. They also made a business case and created a pro proposal to the senior leadership as what as to what this would look like and and what they did was they started with the management group first. This is a smaller healthcare system. It's probably got around three thousand employees, and they started. And then they bit by bit grown from there. They also, what they did as they communicated about this program, they also communicated it via, um, uh, adver they advertised it throughout the organization. And, they, and in this particular case, they also had an online registration system. And so, again, these people were experienced that were developed in the organization. They took our train the trainer and they simply have gone and delivered it to, as I said, about 300 people at this point. I'm going to share results that they've achieved a little further on. So you'll hear um, the results that have happened with this organization. Now, the next organization we call it, they delivered, they've done it in a blended way. And what I mean by that is that they've had a mix of internal people as well as bringing in some externals. This is a very, very large healthcare system. It employs um, 150,000 people and it is in a very, uh, it's in a very large geographic area. And so it's a very dispersed workforce in seven different regions. And um, they, 
they wanted to, uh, they already had within that organization quite a number of people who were already, uh, who had already got coaching training, meaning they'd got some uh, ICF certification, for example, they'd taken some extensive uh, training. So they had coaching certification, so they were very experienced. And so they had a, a reasonably large group of those people, but they also wanted to grow more. And so what happened was they, um, in these different areas, in these different regions, some had been using some coaching skills training, some had developed some of their own, some had brought in some other coach training, pro various coach training programs that would bring skills to their leaders and managers and directors, etc. And what happened was they recognized that um, they needed to, they realized that they needed to share amongst all the seven regions some of the best practices and what were we doing? And so they started to, they created a collaborative amongst a, a group of them that were representing all the seven regions and they started to share what, what they were doing in each of those different regions related to coaching and developing coaching skills. And then they talked about the different programs that they were using. And so what happened was they looked at all of these different programs and I'm noticing somebody, um, and can you hear me better now? I just want to make sure it sounded like my voice was going soft. It's wonderful now. Great. Sorry about that. Okay. So what they did is they vetted a number of programs that would support the development of coaching skills amongst wide number of their workforce. And what happened was they chose in this particular case, our program, because of course I'm sharing the information about that. And they said, we are going to use this across all seven regions. What that then created was some of the people within all of these different regions were already certified coaches. So they simply took our train the trainer to be developed to learn that. Others were not already developed coaches, but they wanted to develop more people. And so what happened was they took a series of programs from us so that we could get them to that level of development. And then they learned to deliver the, then they took our train the trainer program. So they selected, they pinpointed, and there was about 90 people initially that were developed. Because again, remember, this is a very, very large organization. They also, um, what they did when they were doing this is not only did they bring people together over time. This, is, this started back in 2011. We are now at 2018. And at this point, they've had over 7,000 people who have taken the coaching skills training. As part of that coaching skills training program, it's quite robust. And so they learn the skills. They then what they do is they break them out into triads so that they're getting they're coaching each other and they're getting feedback on their coaching. The program extends along the initial, uh, 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 in addition to the initial training that they're, they're getting, which is uh, in some of the regions, they're doing it several half days, some are doing it over two days, some are having them come for one day, coming back a month later for another day. So you get the picture, it's, it's divided up a little bit differently. But, or and, what's really important is that this is a program that they're taking that requires them to learn the skills and then also demonstrate that they're learning the skills and get feedback on the coaching. And that extends for a three-month period beyond the initial skills training. This also, what they've done, is they have embedded this 
into a larger leadership development program. So this is one of the things that they are taking and over a, a, a period of time. And what they've done now, so remember I said they started with blended, meaning they were using some external who were coming and delivering some of the trainings. We went to different regions and delivered that. And as well as developing their own internal. Now, what has happened is, and this is over a considerable length of time, is they are now 100% internal, which means that they can, that's why they've been able to uh, develop 7,000 people and growing. And the other piece to that is that, um, they also had to watch their budgets because if they were going to be doing a, a, using a lot of internal support, that would have been really, really challenging. So that's what happened in that case. And there's a lot more to that story, obviously, but that gives you some key, some key points. And then the third, the third one was where it was all external. And this organization started in uh, 2013 with this initiative. Now, what I want to mention here is, with this particular organization, they recognized that they just in no way had the internally developed people at that time. So they, and they wanted to get this going, and they had it as part of a larger leadership development program. And what happened was, they would select leaders from across that organization that had, oh, excuse me, they had 40,000, I think it's 40,000 employees. And they selected people that would come together in one location initially, and they would be taking a number of uh, leadership development uh, programs for the over the course of a week. We were on the last two days of that week on the Thursday and the Friday that they came together in one location. And what happened was there was um, 150 people that came together at that time and for that week that they spent together. And they took, uh, as I said, they took two days with us, which was on the Thursday and the Friday, followed by, for the coaching component, virtual practicums. And this is where they came to our virtual um, classrooms um, where they attended, and we divided them up into groups. So we had... Um, we had 10 trainers that we brought. We had them into five different rooms, excuse me, when they, they came on site, 30 people in each room. And we delivered the program there for two days. Then those same people in those five different groups then attended virtual practicums, virtual coaching skills practicums with their trainers. And they experienced and got feedback on their coaching they observed coaching happening and it was all using real life situations that they were experiencing in their work environment and this was done over a six um a six uh, practicum period. So there were six practicums spread over it was it it was about over a two-month period that they were attending. And this was a requirement that they had to attend in order if they were going to achieve a certificate. And the one thing that they liked about it too was that this supported the embedding of the learning so that they were able to, over time, go back to their, to their work and use those skills, those growing skills, because it, it is not going to work if these people are simply delivered the coaching skills initially and no follow-up, no support to embed the learning, it just won't because people will forget how to do it. They won't have had any accountability around it and so on. And so um, this, this now at, at this point, I think I mentioned they've had 700 people trained and um, now, after three years, after three years, there were 500 people trained at that point. And then now, 
they have officially transitioned where they're doing it 100% with their own people who we develop to be train, you know, to be qualified trainers to do that. And so I'm, 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 I'm going to stop here for a second because I want to make sure that I've answered some questions. So will anybody have any questions at that point? And am I still speaking loud enough? Okay. Volume's good. And how are we doing? What kinds of questions um, are coming up? that you're curious about. And I see some people who I think are from healthcare, and I'm curious if there's anybody on this class who is already experiencing what is happening in a healthcare environment that is adopting coaching. Uh, I see Kieran, very good point. We've learned um, that uh, people have said to us, if, if this can work in healthcare, it can work in anywhere. And that's, why, uh, that's because within the healthcare environment, there are multiple stakeholder groups. So you've got, you know, everybody from, you know, that operates the laundry right up to the CEO. So there are multiple stakeholders. I mean, people who are operating equipment, surgeons, physicians. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So, yeah, very good point. Um, any other questions? Okay, and we'll, we'll still be providing more questions um, shortly as well. So, okay, so here's, this is what's happened. So what are the results? And I'll just, I'll just get to that here. So the results achieved. The first organization, this is what they have so far. And by the way, one of the things that I want to mention, and one of the challenges is to measure the results. And I, I know somebody said, and, be, and, and figure out, well, why are we doing this? What are the outcomes that we're wanting to achieve? And how are we going to know this is succeeding? And one of the areas that I have learned over time, working with many different organizations, is this is where it can, you know, there's challenge to uh, measure it. And so in this organization, they, they've had, uh, you know, they've had some resources, but not a lot. And so at this point, they're reporting in because we interviewed the three organizations. And what they're saying is that more than 90% of the participants were very, very satisfied with the training. So they were getting value out of it. And so that's the one that um, started with, um, has, has done 300 uh, people to date, and they've done it all internally. So that's the first one. Now, uh, the the next one, which was the blended uh, approach that um, I shared, this is the large healthcare system. And what happened is they created um, surveys that they did pre and post they also created a logic model they, to measure the results I've, and an evaluation framework. You, you'll see it on this slide. And they also hired an external uh, consulting organization to analyze the data and summarize the conclusions. And what happened, uh, so, and these are, these are the seven um, top ones in the report that we uh, can provide to you and we'll provide a link for you to access it. We, we go into more detail and percentages and so on. So for example, the listening skills, for example, these were the top seven. And um, the, the listening skills, they were improved by 325%. I'm just using that as, as one key example. And when they came out with these findings, what happened was uh, some people internally in the organization said, hey, let's go present this or let's, let's apply to present this, these findings because this is significant. 
And so I went with them and we presented the findings to Harvard Medical School, McLean Hospital and Institute of Coaching a while back. And these were the top seven findings. And I've always said, I've always said to people, what if you had in any organization, but in the healthcare sector, improved listening? What if you had that? What if you had improved communication? What if you had improved ability to give feedback, conflict resolution, positively impacted relationships, and this one, uh, team dynamics and team communication. These were the findings that came out. And this one I, I, I particularly love, which is the ability to engage staff in conversations that are solutions focused and promote accountability. These were the top seven findings of this organization. And that is um, why they are continuing and they are continuing to expand it. And as I said before, they now have, uh, it's reached beyond 7,000 people. And, but again, this is going back to 2011, they started this. So we are now at seven years seven years into it and continuing that this is a commitment. Um, yeah, great uh, question, Laura. We did not, I did not measure the findings. This was not me coming up with this. This was the cons external consulting organization that was hired to do this, as well as they created uh, pre and post surveys that they used. These are qualitative findings, by the way. I want to mention these are qualitative. And they also, uh, they also created focus groups where they were, I had nothing to do with that. We Coaching on the Box had nothing to do with that. This was what they did. And we have a report that um, was generated by the consultant who came up with these findings as well. So um, any findings about improving trust? Well, here's the question that I would say. Um, what if you see those seven key findings, uh, Kieran, what if that happened? I wonder if trust might be a byproduct. Because if you have that, my guess is very strong that there will be an improved culture of trust. In other words, there'll be a growing trust that has happened. And here's the other thing that I want to mention. Because in this particular organization, because of these um, findings, and what happened and is happening is that they initially, in this organization, they were intending was to use this with teams and leadership. That's where they were at. And that's where they started at, was teams and leadership. But what happened was, we, when, we, when uh, myself and the other people presented to, uh, at, the, at the Harvard Medical uh, and Institute of Coaching Conference, we called it taking coaching viral because that's what happened in this organization. Because what happened was a buzz started to be created. So they, they started to deliver this program that was easily adoptable, that people could get the model, that they understood it. And uh, buzz was created. And so what ha has happened is they literally have waiting lists of people in their organization who want to take this. And uh, also, if you'll see this, it started with teams and leadership. You'll see this on the, on the slide. But what's happened is, is it's expanded into areas that they never in a million years thought it would. Diabetes research, acute rehab teams, family practice phys physicians, uh, people who are working with people who have eating disorders, child life specialists, uh, and even families. So it, it, it was just, um, 
it was just ama- it is just amazing as to what is happening as a result of this that never in a million years would they have thought that this would have been the case i think this is the, it, it's very exciting and i i, I want to emphasize this was not my findings this was their findings and that's why they're continuing to grow and expand it. And what's happened in this organization's case is it is also now 100%. It's doing it all um, internally. Uh, we're not we're not going and, and doing it they're they're well on their way and they they have got the capacity and they've got the ability and they definitely with waiting lists they've obviously got the credibility as well and my guess would be they've got a lot more trust as well because of the success of this program I get I get phone calls I get people commenting people I don't even know who uh, mentioned that they've 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 um, benefited so much from learning um, this model and these key skills. It's so uh, it, it's so exciting um, when when you see this happening. Uh, I see Elaine thoughtful of the possibility of this kind of infection. Yeah, we, we you know taking it viral, uh, spreading without an, it initially starting with senior leaders. Yes, yes. Exactly. That is quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to move to the next one. And I see Jimmy, I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to touch on your question in a minute. I just want to go into the, the next organization, the final one, which was um, all external. And, um, and these are the two graphs that we got for them. And again, this is not our assessment. This is their assessment of what has happened um, as a result. And you can see that these were the things that they measured, listening skills, asking powerful questions, encouraging others, co-creating uh, and coaching, uh, coaching meaningf- meaningful action, supportive, accepting, focused, and they measured it at different points and they came up with these results. And then, um, and then the other graph is specific improvements in the, in the work environment, uh, motivation and engagement. You can see this uh, has increased significantly, timely problem solving, ownership for outcomes, innovation in problem solving. And that will also be in the report that, that we have that you can, you can access it. And I'm going to I'm going to now um, I'm going to now focus on uh, Jimmy's question. And I don't know uh, whether uh, well, it's all right. I'll just carry on. So Jimmy's asking, how did you market introduce your coaching programs? All right. So in this um, different ways. So for example, in uh, the first, uh, the first um, example I gave, which was they did it all internally. How did, they, how did they find out about us? Somebody had heard about Coaching Out of the Box. That's how they found out. They contacted us and, you know, just through word of mouth. And I think probably it came from the one, uh, the one organization that had started with us in 2011. Um, but, but it was a buzz that had been created. And so they contacted us and they, um, they had us, cre- you know, found out the, the costs and so on and looked into it and then um, they embraced it. The second organization, which was the blended approach, um, they also found out about uh, us. Um, I, w- I was, um, because I'm a coaching educator, a couple of uh, women had experienced some coaching education from me through my involvement with uh, the University of Texas at Dallas and also Royal Roads University in Canada. And they um, actually, no, that's not how they, sorry, I got off. No, they found out about this. They did not find out about it that way. I was at a conference a coaching conference and we were exhibitors, Jimmy 
and they and I was promoting this program and that's how they found out about us and then it, it kind of grew from there and they looked at our materials they looked at our program and so on and you know proposals and so on after that but that's how they found out about us so there's Jimmy hi Jimmy did you want to make a comment and you can just unmute yourself can you unmute your mic we can't hear you Jimmy can you find it very very interesting and I'll, I'll leave my comments later yeah okay okay thanks terrific thanks. nice to have that good question and then the um sorry i was trying to remember the other one um oh i know and the other one how they they put out a request for proposals and i found out about the this uh request for proposals and, and sent a proposal. And that's how they found out about us. Uh, so um, so that's, that's the answer to that. And so what is, I, I'm curious uh, as we're going through this and we've got now, I'm, I'm looking at the time and I'm just seeing here, what have we got? Oh, we've got, we've got some time left. So, uh, this is where questions Q and A uh, can come in, um, and so what what questions are coming up for you as a result of what do you want to know? What are you curious about as a result of what I've shared so far? And what do you see? What do you see? Because you're out there and you've come to this webinar, what do you see as some of the challenges that coaching could address, coaching skills development could address in, in the healthcare sector or in, in any organization? What are you seeing? Because what, as I'm, I'm waiting to see, please just jump in with your questions or your comments. Ah, breaking silos, Laura. That tell me more. What do you? How do you see that happening, Laura? Are you willing to, to just unmute yourself and share what you mean by that breaking silo? Tell me more about that. What do you see? Not sure she can get off. There you are. Yeah. Yeah, um, the um, I think that um, the the challenge that we usually face are people protecting their own uh, their own little uh, space and um, and not allowing everybody else to contribute to the end uh, customer experience. So um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about a different organization I used to work for, a very very large insurance broker where um, the, uh, the owner of the large account didn't let other business units uh, trying to cross-sell the products. And uh, the reason behind it is, if you don't perform as a client expect, I might lose my own account and therefore my revenue. Right, right. So how, how do you break, how do you build that trust? So. I think it's it's basically um, you know clearly it's communication, but um, but still I think it's it's one of the challenges right because you can communicate, um, the owner of the account can understand, um, you know, rationally that it makes sense to offer to clients different kind of services, uh, but still there's that level of of. Uh, defensiveness that is hard to break. Okay, well, Laura, excellent point, excellent point. And I wanna share with you what we've experienced. And in, in when we've gone in and supported the development uh, of train the trainers in there, or we've done it ourselves, you, one of the key things that we do is we create, create a safe environment an environment where people start trusting right there because we create it because what we do and as part of the training is these are we do lots of coaching demonstrations and these demonstrations are what I call real. They are not using made up scenarios and or anything like that and the uh, trainer 
who's demonstrating this, and usually they're sitting on stools, or if it's done virtually, it, it's, you know, on the camera. Uh, but the trainer does not know what the other person is going to be coached on. So there's trust gets, it, it just creates an environment where they, people, you know, people sit forward because they can tell that this is not made up. This is real. And it is amazing the environment that gets created when they see it demonstrated and people start opening up within the training room, whether it's virtual or whether it's live about some of their issues and challenges. And we've had diverse groups. So for example, we've had some groups where they're, they're, they're uh, intact team. So for example, we, uh, we've done with the senior executive team, the whole team is there. We create that safe environment. And of course that, that comes from the CEO too, that is, is very uh, supportive of this. And they start, they really start getting into some of their real life, their real life challenges that they're going on. But it's the coaching, it's the way we approach this. It's the listening, it's the questioning, it's the encouraging, it's the supporting. It's this whole framework that we use that helps that environment happen. Uh, so, um, and the, the, breakthroughs, the breakthroughs can occur. I don't mean it's perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's that environment that gets created. One organization that we worked with, this was uh, one that did it all externally. They had, at the launch of the first delivery of this, remember when I talked about there was 150 people at a time, they had the CEO of that organization come up and and re, uh, promote uh, to, uh, and advocate for coaching and, and say how important this was to the organization. In other words, it, that message came from the top. It isn't always the case because in, in another organization, that wasn't. It came up kind of through the grassroots. It came up through some of the uh, OD and HR leaders uh, section. So uh, it, uh, it's just... Um, just you just made me uh, want to mention that, and I uh, I wonder uh, I just want to look through a few of my questions here. Right, I love your your comment um, to uh, Kieran. It would be help. It would help people in organizations realize their potential, be engaged, and co-create amazing futures. Yes, and then I see Tim's question. Uh, I see. I realize that healthcare is a business. What did you find about the culture of working with healthcare organizations versus commercial businesses? Ah, great questions. All right. Well, this is what's interesting because we have delivered across all sec uh, multiple uh, sectors. Uh, it just so happens that that uh, you know. Uh, we're talking about healthcare today. And what is the difference? I would say um, that it depends certainly on the level that they're at in the organization. But here's what I noticed, they all care. They all care. They want to make a difference. They want to contribute. They want to be, they want to have a say. They want to, they, they want to have a, a, some kind of way to support the change that's required in the organization. That's very similar across, um, I've been, I, I, can, I can give you two, two things, uh, healthcare versus oil and gas. That's a big difference, I would say. Oil and gas sector, healthcare. And yet, and yet they're human beings and they all want to be, and here's a, a real important thing, and one of the key skills that we um, train is listening. People want to be seen, heard, and understood. If only in, a, in your conversations that you have in an organization, if only we listen more and we cover our mouths <laughs> and let that other person speak. It moves mountains because they are seen, heard, and understood 
versus talked at and told. They are actually asked, that we, we are in using a coach approach, we are tapping into their ideas, their thoughts, their challenges, and supporting them in coming up with what might be a far better solution for themselves than we could have come up with ourselves. And I see that across all sectors. I also see a common feeling that the, t the leadership at the top doesn't get the challenges that they're experiencing in some of the other areas. So that is what is so important. Um, I hope I kind of answered that. There's a lot, there's great stuff in your question. Uh, yeah, multiple personality styles. I would say that I've noticed in some sections of healthcare, they're more, uh, what I would say, some are mediators, but oh boy, have we ever got ones that are drivers and want to make something happen. So the, the, you know, I would say that it's, it's, it's not that dramatically different at all. Um, So I get excited and I start moving. I could see that my voice was fading. I apologize. Um, I'm just trying to think. Coaching and health care from other organizations, I wouldn't say a lot. Like I, I've said, they're human beings who want to be seen, heard, and understood. They all have challenges. Oh, another one. They're all experiencing change all the time and a very, very fast pace. And I've heard that from multiple sectors, not, uh, not just uh, business, I've heard it in healthcare. Healthcare is overwhelmed with the demands, the changes, the environment, uh, new technologies and so on, as are the other organizations as well. So I'm just also very, uh, watching our time as well. So I'm gonna move, move on. And I'm going to just mention what is next. Uh, watch for our follow-up email, as I mentioned before, on obtaining our detailed report. Contact us. We'd love to talk to you uh, and answer any questions further. Schedule a conversation with me. Happy to do it. It's one of the fa my favorite things to do is to talk to people who are interested in coaching. Uh, visit our website. We have a lot of resources on our website that you might want to uh, take advantage of. And um, I, I just, uh, so that's what's next, but also I want, I'm curious, what are you walking away with as a result of today's webinar? What are you walking away with? Just throw in a comment in the chat area. Passion and mission. Okay, got it. I know you need to go. That's okay. What else? What else are you walking away with as a result of investing one hour of your time to come to this webinar? Anything else? And any final questions? We've got about, uh, what have I got? I've got a little less than a minute left. Anybody else? Ah, enthusiasm. Yes, Laura, please. That's great. All right. Well, thank you so much for your attention, for coming. And I encourage you to uh, get out there and bring coaching to all organizations. Again, contact us if you have any questions, want to chat further. All right. Bye-bye now. She's going to... Thank you.